The adjusting entries for merchandisers are basically the same as those for service firms, with the exception of adjusting the inventory account. This is a problem for periodic merchandisers because the unadjusted trial balance for inventory is the prior month's ending balance. Additionally, cost of goods sold is zero. The solution to this problem is uh, using something we call the cost of goods sold model, which basically adjusts the inventory account and closes purchases to cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold model is beginning inventory plus net purchases. This equals the cost of goods available for sale. This represents all the inventory that we could sell. From that, we subtract ending inventory to arrive at cost of goods sold. Uh, ending inventory is determined by a physical count of inventory. This is done each time in, uh, ending inventory is adjusted and cost of goods sold is recorded. Beginning inventory is the prior period's ending inventory. Net purchases are calculated by taking purchases minus purchase returns and allowances minus purchase discounts plus freight in. So let's look at an example. Assume the following account balances. Let's plug those into the cost of goods sold model and calculate cost of goods sold. The purchases of $50,000 minus the purchase returns and allowance of $2,000 minus purchase discount of $1,000 plus freight in of $5,000 equals net purchases of $52,000. Now we take the beginning inventory of $20,500 plus the net purchases of $52,000 and that equals the cost of goods available for sale of $72,500. From that we subtract ending inventory of $19,000 to arrive at cost of goods sold of $53,500. So that's the calculation. Let's put it into an adjusting entry. The adjusting entry that results from using the cost of goods, goods sold model is a doozy. So let's break it down into simpler terms. We need to close the purchases account. So, purchase, uh, so purchase returns and allowances and purchase discounts, which have normal credit balances, are closed with debits. Purchases and freight in have normal debit balances, so they are closed with credits. Costs of goods sold needs to be recorded, so let's debit that amount. Finally, the beginning inventory needs to be replaced by the ending inventory amount. So we debit ending inventory and credit beginning inventory. And with some accounting magic, that whole journal entry balances. This is the more appropriate way to make that en uh, entry. We don't actually have accounts called beginning inventory and ending inventory. So we would just credit the inventory account for $1,500 to reduce the balance from $20,500 to $19,000. That prior entry was more of an aid for your conceptual understanding. This is how it's actually done. The closing entries for merchandisers are the same as those for service firms, except for that we have some new temporary accounts that must be included in the closing process. Since sales returns and allowances, sales discounts, and costs of goods sold all have normal debit balances, they get closed with credits and are included in the expenses closing entry. Revenues get closed with debits to revenue, the revenue accounts and credits to income summary. Expenses and the contra revenue accounts get closed with credits and income summary is debited. Income summary has a $10,000 credit balance, so it gets closed with a debit and owner's capital is credited for $10,000. Finally, owner's withdrawals is closed with a credit and a debit to owner's capital.